In this video, we're gonna break down the Dropbox Product Engineer interview loop and interview questions, the most important things you need to know. Number one, Dropbox has one of the most well-run interview processes in tech in terms of reducing bias, in terms of repeatable results as a company. That's good for candidates. Number two, we actually spoke with, to make this guide, one of the people who rewrote the entire hiring process for product engineers at Dropbox. Number three, communication is the ultimate North Star for Dropbox's culture fit screen. They hold candidates to a higher level of expectation for how good your communication skills are. So you want to come in ready to flex those chops. Dropbox has massive scale, over 700 million users registered worldwide. They're really popular file hosting services, what they're mainly known for, but they have a ton of other SaaS products as well. So Dropbox has pretty good compensation packages. You can see each level here and they're reflecting average total compensation. One thing to note about their vesting schedule, it's not great, it's not bad, it's pretty much regular. So they just have a standard vesting schedule of 25% per year over four years. A Dropbox product engineer, they're gonna be responsible for building, upgrading, and maintaining their suite of file sharing and collaboration tools. They're gonna to do a ton of cross-functional work. You are going to be held to a higher level of communication skills because of that cross-functional work. Archetypes is not something you'll see mentioned in a lot of interview processes, but again, Dropbox is being really good. They tend to lead with this. It actually maps to their uh, career ladder that we'll show you later, but the basic thing is it's very similar to Will Larson of staffengineer.com's archetype idea is that more junior candidates below the senior level, they're pretty much like engineers are pretty much the same, but once you get to staff level and above, you kind of separate into these very clear different molds. So whether you're a tech lead, an architect, or a solver, you wanna know what mold you fit into and you wanna leave them with that impression that you fit that mold by the time the interview is done. Dropbox cares a lot about what they do with their systems, but they tend to prioritize reliability and most importantly, availability. So the way that they do engineering maps to this, they have on-call rotations for the most of their uh, different roles, sometimes senior, sometimes junior, but just get ready to have this as a talking point during the interview process, something that you're ready for. Business impact is something that all companies talk about. But again, because Dropbox has mapped out this really clear interview process, they've even defined different types of impact you want to show. You can show this throughout your rounds to get the best results. Show that you're consistent. You deliver results again and again. Show that your velocity is high. You can produce good results quickly. And lastly, you're accountable for the results that you are responsible for. So whether those are good or bad results, you want to know that you're accountable for those within your scope. As you advance, your scope is going to get larger. And they do have really good documentation on how their career framework works. I think about it as a ladder, but what it is, is an open source, super well laid out responsibility and promotion path for their software engineers at all levels. Check that out if you're curious about where you'd fit in and make sure that they're interviewing you at that level before your interview process starts. You don't really need to focus on Dropbox values. We'll get into how to actually do their behavioral and culture fit screen a little bit later, but you do want to be a sharp communicator. Coding questions are more important for more senior applicants and system design and reverse system design questions are more important for seniors. So again, super standardized process. This is nice because it's repeatable and for candidates, it's predictable. So the scripts and the prompts that interviewers are actually trained to follow are most of the time going to be followed. Most times companies don't even have that level of documentation and training done. They have a really cool commitment to DE&I, and a lot of companies just say that, but Dropbox actually does something about it. All hiring decisions are evaluated by a hiring committee, which is normal for tech, which is normal for tech. But in this case, Dropbox redacts the candidate's name and gender so that they can get less biased results. Very cool. In that same vein, Dropbox is a great place for a non-traditional software engineer. They have a ton of history of hiring people with weird backgrounds, 
Partly this maps to their practical interview process, and partly this maps to their philosophy about engineers. So if you are a non-traditional engineer, Dropbox could be a place that you fit into really well. Their recruiter screen is different. So at most tech companies, it's pretty lightweight. They're gonna see if you're minimally qualified, interested, and you move on. You're probably passing most recruiter screen, most companies are probably passing recruiter screen candidates through like 70 or 80% of the time. At Dropbox, it's flipped you're only going to pass about 20% of the times. And for the most part, this is because of a candidate not showing a high enough level of communication skills or enough business impact. So make sure you do that even on the recruiter call, even if you're used to just kind of sleepwalking through those rounds, you got to bring it for Dropbox. So the technical screen at Dropbox, it's going to be on code signal. You want to get used to code signal before you actually go to this tech screen. You're not going to do all the work in a separate IDE, so make sure you can work on code signal so it's not clunky when you actually do it. It's going to be a big, meaty coding problem broken into several different smaller steps. The nice thing is it's going to be practical. It's going to actually map to the work that you would do on the job. So again, you want to perform the code entry, the testing, the debugging, and everything else through that code signal interface. And it's going to happen again at the onsite working in code signal. So again, get comfortable with it. A nice thing, along with their very cool, non-biased hiring process, is that though the tech screen normally is just done independently without an interviewer, if you would prefer to do it with an interviewer, it's nice because you can get more signal across in terms of communication than ask for one. And if you'd be better off doing it on your own, then don't ask for one. But it's nice that they give you that option. The final interview happens after the tech screen. And what you're going to basically see is a combination of coding and debugging. You'll have more of those if you're more junior. An all-around round, which is what they call behavioral and culture fit. The hiring manager and system design or reverse system design. System design and reverse system design are going to have more of those rounds if you're more senior. Coding and debugging. So these are going to be really similar in the onsite to the initial tech screen, except there's going to be an interviewer there for sure. So the reason these get hard is that after you implement the basic functionality, the next step where candidates get tripped up on sometimes is involving an increase in scale, a dramatic increase in scale. What would you do if the requests are multiplied by 10 or 100. Or less commonly, they can ask you about a next step involving a change in time and space complexity. Debugging, probably more common for more below the senior level candidates, but they're gonna have you be presented with a flawed code base and give you some goals that you need to fulfill, like make this buggy UI display these data points to show this kind of result. So. Um, for the system design and reverse system design round, it is very important that you're speaking the same kind of language as Dropbox. Remember, they're very high focus on availability. If you can talk about trade-offs you made in the reverse system design round for your past projects or for the system you're designing in system design round about decisions made around availability, you're going to speak their same language. If concurrency is an aspect on a system you're building, oopsies, or was in a system that you built in the past, you also want to focus on that. They tend to grill people on concurrency. So especially for that reverse system design round, you want to unpack your projects before you go to that interview. Make sure you're ready for questions about the long-term profiling of technical choices that you made, solutions that you didn't choose and why negative consequences that would have happened if you chose those solutions, as well as these kind of considerations made for availability and concurrency. The all around round, Dropbox is named for their soft skills, behavioral, culture fit screen. They're gonna tell you something different than the reality, so don't be thrown off by what they say. They do have a particular set of values, but they don't assess those in any particular way. They are more like Microsoft than Amazon. Microsoft just wants to hire people that are friendly enough that can do the work. Same thing at Dropbox. It's not like Amazon where they have these very weird traits and they assess you on those. Their North Star, though they are a Microsoft company, the slight different bent they have is it's that higher level of communication that they expect their software engineering candidates to have. Again, the way to show business impact and the three ways that we mentioned earlier. Consistency, velocity, and accountability. Because they have such a high scale environment, 
it can be nice if you're coming from a high scale environment to showcase that, but not a lot of people are. So you need to still distinguish yourself as someone, if I came from a smaller scale background, I still need to showcase impact and complexity. So one thing I could do is show that I optimized as much as I could with the constraints that I had or how I pushed the company to tacker to tackle greater problems. The hiring manager round, like the all around round, is gonna be very much cued in on your communication, especially the more senior you get. If you're talking about a staff or above level role, they're gonna really expect your soft skills to be exceptional to be hired at Dropbox. If you wanna ace your Dropbox product design round, check out our software engineering interview prep course. We go over behavioral system design, and coding rounds. You can try it all for free at tryexponent.com.